Sorry guys, it's a little bit late coming from uh, the Australian Masters round two where I was successful in getting through by the way. We're here at uh, AMF Castle Hill. I have uh, my friend Matt Riley with me. I needed someone with some revs to show how the pins fall down. I've got uh, Matt Winston here from um, Howdy. AMF. So what we'll do, I'll just just to start off, I'll get Matt to throw uh, a few shots and we're going to go down the lane and we're going to watch how the pins fall and we're going to have a look how they go up because that's the first thing when I walked in here was, actually I found that relatively interesting, was how the machines pick them up. So let's go down, you keep bowling that. Yep. Actually, can you bowl on 22? Yep. And we'll go down and have a look. I'll just turn the camera around. Let me go first. Oops. Just waiting for Matt. There's the strings. Let's get a little bit. I hope Matt doesn't throw this in the gutter. This is what I like. Oh, no, I didn't see anything. I'm going to have to go around the other side. Ah. So this is where the magic happens. So I would dare say, after seeing the length of the strings, I don't think you can... Sp I, don't know if, I don't know if you can spare splits, actually. Because that string wouldn't go all the way over to the corner, would it? Well, actually, maybe the strings do. Oh, wow. Wow, that was pretty quick. And if you just look at the machinery, it's uh, no big, no big crazy machines with heaps of working parts. That is basically the machine there. Ah, oh, that pin's off spot. I wonder if it picks it up. No. Oh, it does. So, this is what we heard before. If, if the pins don't go down on the spot, the machine picks it up and it keeps cycling up to 11 times. And then if the pins, if the machines haven't got it right by then, um, human assistance is then required to fix it. But today it looks okay. The string seems to have a bit of urethane around the top. Ah, oh, see. Oh yeah, so that's off spot. So technically the machine should pick it up again. Or maybe not. Maybe it's only on strike shots. Now, I did hear, and look, I'm going to go bowl on these very soon, that you do leave a lot less ring, ring corners because, like for a right-hander, the six pin, which would usually go around the ten, the string go, like, and you would miss it. The, um, the string actually gets, gets tangled up and hits the 10. Okay, so there's a few off spots here and the machine has identified that. It's gonna put them down again. Perfect. Yeah. See if Matt can hit the right side of the headpin this time. 
Okay, so that's the first corner I've seen. I wonder, I wonder how long those strings are when they come down. Like, surely you must be able to spare. If you leave, say, the, the 6, 7, 10, surely you must be able to slide it across enough. It looks like the strings have a fair bit of length to them because they go all the way up there. Oh, wow. There's a fair bit of slack on Oh, wow. So I'll just show, Matt just pointed out something to me. These strings actually have a fair bit of slack in them. So I would dare say that you would be able to uh, slide the pins across. So we'll just go down here again. So you notice the um, there's no sweep. There's basically just this black thing that comes down. The pins get set. And if they are on spot, it'll come up and then you can bowl. I'll just, I'll go back again and just show you out here. I like the masking units actually, by the way. That's pretty clever. Now, like when you walk in, you actually can't tell the string machines until you um, actually have a good look. We'll watch another. We'll watch another shot from this angle. Okay, well, that answers my question about a flat 10. Even Matt Riley can leave a flat 10 with string pins, that's good to see. You'll notice there's heaps of less moving parts though, and look, one of the, one of the big advantages to these machines is, uh, is the safety. And you have to look at it from a, um, if you owned a business, like not many people know, there was almost two deaths this year in bowling centers with uh, machinery down the back. And when you take the machines away and you have a setup such as this, you, um, they are 100% safe. There is no um, huge moving parts. It's just a matter of the strings going, just going up and down. Very different setup. So we might go out. Now that we've seen how the, the pins go, we'll just watch one more shot from that. Well, let's see what happens. I want to see where the string goes now. Oh yeah, so... Didn't bounce it out. So we'll just go watch another few from the front. And then we'll, um, I'm going to have a throw on it myself. Yeah. Strings or no strings, that ball's going to strike if you do that. Okay, we'll go back up. 
I might get Matt to hold uh, hold the camera. See, if you're standing here, you, you seriously, it's just like another set of pins, really. Nice hit. I still haven't seen any of this this string carry that I've uh, got told about. Here, Matt. Uh, so, uh, don't expect me to commentate. Me to commentate. Okay, so this is uh, George's very first row. That's a terrible rack, but he's complaining about the rack currently.
Guys, I think you're boring everyone with all these strikes. That's what it's all about. Yeah, you know, it's not all about striking, Matt. All right, thanks. Cheers, mate. It's interesting. There's, a, there's obviously there's a few things. First of all, the racks aren't always 100%. Um, uh, I thought I, I honestly believe before I came here tonight, I thought the carry would be a little bit better. I'd heard stories about like if, if you went to ring a 10 pin, maybe the string would come around and hit it. Um, that hasn't happened yet. Um, the carry, the, the hits are very similar, but they're not. Um, they're not exactly the same. Um, look, there's, there's positives and negatives uh, associated with it. I'm. I always look at things from a business side point of view. I can see. I can see the positives in this. Versus, I think the positives outweigh the negatives for sure. And people said years ago, like decades ago, that we'd never ever bowl on synthetic lanes. We weren't going to bowl on plastic crap. And have a look at where you know where the sports evolved now. And I honestly believe is that this is we are seeing the beginning of another aspect of our sport coming into play now. And. Uh, AMF are, are going to be one of the first ones to roll it out, and not only throughout Australia but in the world uh, on, on a larger scale. And I, I think bowlers, um, until you bowl on it, I think you should reserve your judgment. I, I think it's just like normal bowling. There's a few subtle differences, but at the end of the day, we're all participating on the same lane condition, the same pins, and we're playing uh, playing on the, on the same level uh, playing field. Is it the same as regular bowling? Not quite, but does it provide a safer environment for people to work in? Does it save the proprietor money? And are we still competing in the sport if Matt and I bowl the game against each other? Absolutely. So, um, do you think uh, rev rate on this will having a high rev rate on this will be more beneficial? No, and I'm, I'm glad Matt came tonight because. I wanted to see what happened with someone with 450 plus RPM did to the pins because you know if if we went back the old way and made it made the pins heavier, the guys who use 16 pound gear and the guys who throw a tremendous amount of revs, they knock the pins over more. It's pure physics. But on something like this, it, it hasn't really changed. Like we've watched Matt file a bunch of shots. There's been nothing out of the ordinary. The only out of the ordinary thing has been some um, some off spots, but you know, if we're in a tournament environment and we got dealt a really bad rack, we'd, we'd basically see rack. Yeah. So, which you, you can do here. I see no advantage to to power players versus strokers. Um, it's been interesting. I thanks AMF for giving me the opportunity. Um, I think it's great. That's my personal opinion. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to. Uh, Throw them on there. Are there any questions of note, Matt? Uh, yeah, so Andrew Frawley asked um, what weight are the pins? That's a good question. What are they? Uh, so they're, um, Andrew, they are normal uh, Cubica AMF pins. Uh, so, you know, supplied the USBC approved, so normal of any bowling venue you can purchase. So, no different. Um, there was just another question there for. I, I did hear that the um, the head pin would get a battering, the one three, but they are, from what I'm told, they are going to be rotated on a very regular basis. Once and every all, three days. I and just the tech in. Oh, the tech said every three Once days. Once every three days. Uh, the one, two, three, ten, and seven, every three days. The rest, once a week. You see the yeah. ones that are getting... Getting a belting. Yeah. Uh, so, Michael Craig just asked, uh, does George Falingos think the string pin setters impact the center's ability to run events or be accredited? Absolutely not. And I know at the moment they are not U USBC accredited. Obviously, we follow the, the direction of the USBC being in Australia. But at the moment, the, from what I, I, I've heard from the industry, is that the USBC has put it in a too hard basket. But it's an inevitable fact that at some point in time, they're going to have to make a decision on this. and. I think, I personally think, there is nothing wrong, wrong with nothing wrong with string bowling. If anything, it's just another evolution in the sport. Um, I think 
the the way they set the pins down, you know, you know, the less maintenance, the safety aspect. They use thirty percent less energy. Um, there's just so many more positives. And if you're a proprietor and you're considering putting in um, this versus traditional, you've really got to have a you know decent think about it. And are you able to still run leagues? Absolutely. You, it doesn't impact your leagues. The only people it really does impact, and I don't. I don't even know how, really, because if you're a competitive bowler, say like myself, and you bowl tournaments all throughout, you know, Australia and overseas, you know, this is my league centre. I just bowl league here. It's fantastic. If I want to go bowl a tournament, I just go to another centre which may not have strings. Like we, I don't think there should be a real big deal made out of, oh, that centre's got strings and that one doesn't. It's like you know, you know, picking on the ugly kid at school. Like, <laughs> this is a beautiful bowling facility. And for the little old ladies who come every Wednesday, for their average league bowlers who buy one league a week, they're going to come here, they're going to throw the ball down, notice that the pins are being picked up a little bit different, they're not going to care. And if you look at the overall business of bowling, on who come to bowling centres, that I think the people who are going to dislike that represent such a small percentage, um, it's totally irrelevant. I'm a huge fan of these. If I opened a bowling centre, I would have all of these. What is it? Do you know what the cost is, Matt? Yeah, so from what I understand, and um, I was hoping that uh, Dion would be online from Cubica AMF, um, who was uh, instrumental in the installation here, but um, they're, they're not that dissimilar to a normal full install. Uh, so I guess the long-term benefits are there. It's cheaper um, running costs, electricity, uh, as well as... Uh, um, our main focus is safety for our team. Uh, there is a question here though from uh, Mr. Bates, Brian, uh, wanting to know what the frames per stop is. So, um, Brian, Cubica uh, forecasts that it's about 4,000. However, um, I think for here though, we are only uh, week one of install. Uh, so, I don't think it would be as high as that uh, yet. Um, so. From what I understand from the team, the biggest problem has been um, the strings wearing in because uh, they're a bit tight. Um, and so there's been a few issues with uh, strings wrapping around the tops of pins um, and then human interventions had to get involved in um, adjusting the, the pins. Um, there was another question on here from... Um, I've lost it. Oh, Jared. Lean asked, what happen if balls get stuck if no mechanic? So uh, we don't have mechanics, we, um, we have facilities team members. So a bowling venue has got four walls um, and so the responsibility of a facilities team member is everything mechanical and operational that happens within those four walls. Um, so one of the really good things about this, um, this type of equipment, we have the ability to train all team members on the basics. So if a facilities team member is doing something else, uh, we do have more people trained that have the ability to go down and um, fix a, a, a string that may be broken or you know an issue with it. Um, also to the, um, the machines are very user friendly so it actually tells you what the problem with it is. Um, I'm no expert at this but um, this is what I've been told in all my reading and research. So, yeah. um, so Rachel Dinty who's the manager on duty here tonight, um, if there was a bowling ball stuck she'd be able to come out, uh, come down here and, and retrieve that quite easily. I've just noticed there's, uh, there's no scanners, which quite often in some software systems there'll be uh, a scanner and, you know, a couple of feet out from the lane looking at the pins. How do, I wonder, there must be some sort of sensor to know when the pins go down. Don't put on the spot. Can we actually just, we'll finish up real soon. We'll go look at the pin up really close and we'll look at the string and we'll look at the attachment is that yeah okay? sure yeah Did you want to take... yeah yeah okay so that is the pin you can see it's got this uh, coating of urethane around the string um, that not only helps with uh, durability, um, it helps helps with strengthening connection. You can see that there's some sort of plug there maybe holding the string in. Apart from that,
standard pins. Now if you look from a sectional view, it goes up to there. Just come around here. And that's where all the strings are. So, based off the pulley system. Yeah, that's Matt Rowley throwing a gutter. Let's try to track the ball. Ah, oh, it's long gone. Come on, it's quick. Straight into the pins. The pins actually have a fair amount of string to them. Like, see that one's off. Let's we'll see if it picks it up. Crystal, I think the possibility, I thought maybe with the 710 the string wouldn't be long enough, but after looking at it now, I, I don't think the problem's a string. I think the problem is uh, uh, these mats where the pins go into, just, just in there. Um, and the way they're tilted down, they're just, there's no way you're going to be able to bounce them out, I, I think. waiting for Matt. Do you have a... Yeah, that last shot I made, that was a good point, that um, the six pin went around the ten, but the string took it out, and that's uh, that's where I believe the carry is going to go up a little bit. Can you throw a messenger? Not sure. Don't think so. But are you going to get more corners out? Absolutely. Come on, Matt. I like them. <laughs> Looks like we might have a ball stuck. I, like the, the, the mechanism of dropping these these pins down. Ah, oh, that was a string. The mechanism of dropping these pins down with so little moving parts. I think, from a safety point of view, and if you think about it in its sort of simplicity, it's um, it's just a simple way of doing it. Tenth frame. I was at the tenth frame. Yeah. Oh. Almost. 
Hey, I'll go, we'll go back around the front. Might finish up with uh, Yeah. If you play a bit straighter. Yeah, you're Okay. Oh. Was, was that a string? That was a that was a stone aim, but something came around and hit it. Well, in our summary, we're, Matt and I are thinking that maybe if you play a bit straighter that the carry's better, but who knows, we're bowling on a typical hell shot, so. No, actually, mate, don't bowl, don't bowl. This, this is what I was talking about with the rack, so I'll just zoom in. Now, look, as a tournament bowler, if I, if I got that rack, I'm probably gonna re-rack it. So, I think the rack thing is, uh, maybe they haven't ironed out the bugs yet, but even if you're bowling a tournament, you just re-rack it anyway, so. Yeah, but I don't think it makes any difference to carry either. Well, have a go. Matt's using a pitch red. No difference. No difference. Okay. That's just falling over. Move left, and it doesn't carry as well. It's been so fly around, like, they do with... Yeah. So I'll go... Well, actually, no, let's have a look at that. So the machine's having a bit of a spack attack now, however. What it does, like, that was the first time, so it put, put the pins down incorrectly. And now that rack's really bad, but it should pick it up. Yeah, so the sensors have picked up that it's a terrible rack. So now this is the second time. So the rules are if it does it 11, now that's perfect. If it does it 11 times, then it'll call for assistance. But the, the machine tells you what's wrong with it. So that's a good rack. Uh, Jared, in, re in answer to your question, am I okay with the, with the string knocking the pins over? Absolutely. It's just, I know it's not traditional and the, the purists are not gonna like this, but it's just, it's, it's look, I don't, look, I don't even know how to, I don't know how to, um, I don't even know how to, I don't even know how to clarify it, but we have to classify it in some way. It's an, an, an inevitable part that we're gonna see this again. So I think it, it could be like golf where you have one like uh, hit off tee and then you have an intermediate tee and then you have a ladies tee. Maybe we can say that, you, you know, string bowling is, you know, off this different classification. But at the end of the day, if we run a tournament here, we're, we're all bowling on the same thing. Matt's bowling on it, I'm bowling on it. It's the same lane condition. So. The only thing that's really changed here is how the pins are picked up and down. We're bowling in the same pins, the same weight. Um, I'm okay with it. Um, we might just finish off. Matt, do you have anything to say? No, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm overly impressed. There's not a lot of difference. Yeah. Not, I can't see. I think the carry, you might get a, lot more, a little bit more lucky at break here. Yeah. Because the pins seem to, the, the string, I guess, knock another pin over. Yeah. Because I've had a few already tonight. Yeah. But there's no messages. None. Yeah. We haven't seen any messages. The pins won't. And this is renowned for the big, big pin yeah. action. But here, I haven't seen any yet. Yeah. 
Mark, are you throw something? Yeah, Thank I you. think what we need to do, George, as I said before, let's chuck some cash in and um, have, have a, a skin uh, skins. Here. Yeah, yeah. A Friday night. Um, everyone's welcome to come on down. Hundred bucks entry. Some skins. Awesome. Have a go. Yeah. So, so if you live in Sydney, um, we're going to uh, run a skins very soon, and you can come have a go of these yourself. Apart from that, thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm a fan of it. Okay? See you later. Bye.